I'm going to do something different right quick, you know. I want to show my appreciation uh, to people that went out there and really supported the New Jack crew. You know, they stood up and they did what they had to do. So if I shot you out and I mispronounce your name, I'm going to get it together. Let's roll. Joel, stand up. Devil Doc Q, <laughs> for sure. Producer Kilo. Michael Goldsmith. Chosen One. Me, Me in London. LaQuay Gant. Jalen JC. Ty Akabula. Tony O'Collin. Jolie Menor. Jonathan Hardaway. British Ratliff. Kid. See Me. Christopher. Gardines. Rocha, Z's, Lonnie Lee. Oh, that's the sis right there. Ari Rivers, Q, Emma Wright, A Boo, 1212, Young God, Jason, Melody Stainit, The Race Analyst, PhD, Key Blue, Jesse Anaya, DC92K, Montreal Pittman, Shay Shante, Dominique South H2O Wife. He really fast. Key to the City TV, Shamika Smith, Antoine Artis, LeBrett Change, Dr. Ashley H. PhD, Pamela Russell, Pat Watson, Lisa Artutasi, April Collier, Heather A., Bama Built, Yolanda S., Dre Kendricks, Kevin Thomas, Love Over Hate, for show, sure. Immaculate Crown, Crip. 1C, Trey McGrew, Auntie Fabian David, all right, Cheeky, Travis Nichols, Henry Rich, It's Miss Ray Ray, Jarvin Murphy Payne, Stacy 201133, Moose Style, Donella Wright, Carlita Kimball, Dan Jones, Fat Boy Slim, 81 Trey. I appreciate you guys for joining the membership. Now, I know everybody can't join the membership, and we a New Jack family, and we pitch in and we help out. So a lot of guys been contacting me saying they want to buy they uh, fellow members, you know, that can't afford a membership, a membership. Now, that's what I call a family. New Jack crew, stand up. We're going to start this story from the part where the judge told me I was being held without a bond. Because, you know, at that time, I had just came from Earl K. Long's hospital to the prison infirmary in the East Baton Rouge Parish Prison. So the minute that the judge said I was being held without a bun, I mean, not an hour later. Inmate, pack your shit. Moving out. Now, C.O. Jackson then came in here and told me to pack my shit. I'm moving out. Now, as we walking, I see we passing the new building. I say, man, I'm going to this funk-ass old building again. So he tell me, yeah, you going to F. Wayne. So I ain't tripping either way. But as I'm walking, I'm like, God damn, you know, I'm walking through F. I'm looking in the cells as I'm walking to my cell with Lieutenant Jackson. And all the cells are overcrowded. It's four racks to a cell. And them occupants. Pie, plus two dudes on the floor. Man, it's crazy crowded up in the parish. It may move something. When I get to my cell, I'm looking like, man, this shit done got all out of hand. I got eight dudes already in the cell. I'm going in. So I roll my mat out because I want to give me some rest. Now, when I get in my cell, one of the other cellmates whispered to his homeboy, man, I hate an old fake ass nigga. Now, I ain't make no big deal out of it because I'm coming in your house right now. So I roll my mat out because I want to give me some rest. Soon as I roll my mat out, three other dudes start chiming in. We gonna roll us up one. Now, I don't know if they think this is my first time or what, but like I said, I don't know these dudes, so I let this shit go on for about five minutes until I can't take the shit no more. Say, my G, you got something on your mind? Boy, don't talk to me. Now, this dumbass dude named Jaquise, I can still remember these dudes' names like it was yesterday. Jaquise, Rambo, Gerald, Dusty, Hakeem, Ludo, Devin, and Carl. And it's seems like Jaquise is the ringleader. Now, me and Jaquise having back and forth words, then Hakeem yell out, say, Jaquise, go ahead and flush that boy. Now, with him being on that instigating shit, this shit just done turned up a notch. Now, the conversation start going between Jaquise and Hakeem. They talking like I ain't even in the room no more. King, I knocked that boy out. Boy, you talking that shit. Bring your whole ass back here and let me show you something. Now, this time, I'm just getting in the Paris. I ain't even got a pair of tennis shoes to put on my feet to fight. I'm so 
pissed off. I don't give a fuck. So I head to the back. I'm at the back just waiting on Jack Keys to get back here. And I hear them bucking him up. Man, you got this. Just go straight in and hurt that boy. Now, when they get back there, you got Dusty on my left, Jero on my right. You got Hakeem behind me and Jack Keys in front of me. Now, I ain't stupid. I know it's a real possibility I can get rolled out right now. Now, they kind of bag up a little bit and me and Jack Keys move up to go in the mix. Come on. Bam. Yeah. Bam. Huh? Bam. Bam. What? Bow. Come on. Bow. Stop playing. Bow. Why you hit like a hoe? Come on. Bow. 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 That's it? You quit? Nah. Bow. Bow. Stop playing with me in here. Hill. Bow. Bow. Now the fight ain't even last for three minutes. I bust Jaquees up. Now Jaquees, he a super high yellow nigga. Every time I hit him, all you seen was another night and him turning blue, green, purple, and yellow. So once I beat him up, I went side in the day room and they all went back to the cell. So I know what that mean. Damn, they're plotting on me right now. So I'm sitting in the day room and I feel somebody tap me on my shoulder. What's happening with you, boy? Now this this dude named Dalton. Me and Dalton ain't never been friends, but we always kept it cordial. Say, G, man, what you and Jack Keys was in here swallowing the boat, bro? So I start telling Dalton what happened, but it ain't really much to tell. And they come walking out the cell. Now they all just passing in my vicinity just looking at me. So Dalton started giving me the rundown because he been in the Paris with them for about six months. And Dalton know how they rock and he done told me a story how they flushed another dude out and got him up out of here. So Dalton ended up giving me some long wire and some copper pieces. Not only am I not taking this situation lightly, I'm just on some dirty shit right now. Now I gather up all the shit Dalton gave me and I head back to my cell. Now I've been in the cell for about 10 minutes by myself. Here come all them. Yeah, bro. We got to get him up out of here. Now, they in here talking over my head to each other, talking about they going to have to get me up out of here. So I wait for about three minutes, and then I bust out the cell to the bathroom. I've been in the bathroom for about 15 minutes. In walk Hakeem and Ludo. Now, when they walk in the bathroom, all the lights just start flashing and flickering, looking like lightning, and sparks just start flying. So I step down up out the stall and get up out of there. Now, when I come up out of there, Jaquise, Jerry, and Dustin run up in there. Gerald come running out of there. Carl, go get the guard. Go get the guard. So Carl run to the front and Carl beat the door down. Now after a couple minutes, Sergeant Bailey come up in there. What's all this fucking noise? What the fuck going on back here? Sarge, Hakeem and Ludo laying on the floor in the puddle of water and they ain't breathing or moving. I need medical in the crash cart on F-Wing. What the hell went on? What happened back here? Sarge, I think they was trying to give each other matching tattoos or something. <laughs> Dusty and Gerald just staring me down, but I'm just laughing in their face. Your boy silk the shocker, huh? Yeah, we gonna get you, boy. That's what they said. Now, about 20 minutes later, the garbage truck rolled through and picked that trash up and rolled them up out of here. Now, I'm giving you precisely what my state of mind was at this time. Child time! Now, when we go to child, Gerald try to poke me with his weapon and he ain't even break the skin. Oh, that's what we doing? Huh? Bow! Come here. Bow! Huh? Bow! Huh? Bow! Now, I had to gave him everything I got because Sergeant Bailey had to witness the whole thing. So not only did he not succeed, now he going to the hole and going to be shipped soon for having a weapon and trying to stab another inmate. Now without Gerald, Hakeem, and Ludo, the rest of them really terrified. Now over the next couple days, they get to playing hide and seek. If I'm in the cell, they out the cell. If I'm out the cell, they in the cell. Now this one particular day, right after the last child, I kept saying all day something seemed strange. Now after not being able to put my finger on it for a while, I go to the cell and lay down. Now I got a bottom rack. Face down inmate, don't move. Now all out the blue, the warden, Sergeant Bailey and Lieutenant Jackson bust in the cell and told me to get face down and don't move. What's going on, Warden? Well, what's going on is I got some information that you planning to escape. Huh? Well, if there's nothing to worry about, get cuffed up and let them bring you on out the cell while we search it real good. Now, they done cuffed me up and I'm outside the cell and they in the cell searching and you can't look inside the cell. You have to look the other way. Now, all of a sudden, I hear the warden say, read that motherfucker his rights and take him to the hole. What's going on? You know just what the going on. So I guess that weapon that's under your rack that you been picking through the fucking wall with ain't your weapon. Warden, I don't own no weapon. Get him the fuck out of here. These dirty motherfuckers.
motherfuckers had to sign me up. So they take me to the hole. And I mean, I stayed in the hole for about three weeks. Now at this time, I've been in the hole so long, I don't even know what the day is. Now what I do remember is like two o'clock one morning, I hear a bunch of chains rattling and sound like a bunch of guards running down towards me. On your feet, inmate. The door popped open and they rushed in, pinning me down and cuffing me up. I don't know what the hell going on. Then they dragged me out the cell, still halfway sleep. I don't know what's going on and we just walking and they just pushing me. Then all of a sudden I see they putting me on the transport bus. I have never in my life been on a transport bus in the middle of the night. I'm asking questions. They won't tell me nothing. I'll tell you where you're going. Somewhere very far away. I can still remember this shit ringing in my head. Now when he just got to making jokes out of this kind of real life shit, my anxiety went through the roof. So now at this point, I'm still sitting in that transport bus outside the Paris prison, getting ready to exit the gates, but we ain't left for some reason. What's the hold up, Sarge? Why we ain't rolling? Shut the hell up. Maybe about 45 minutes later, I see some COs get on the bus and give the other COs some life jackets and give me a life jacket. I'm wondering what the hell going on at this point. Once we get the life jackets, now we rolling. Now we end up traveling somewhere in the vicinity of the uh, Chafala Basin. We actually got on a boat to go to this prison. Now the one thing that the CO told me when we was on this boat, that this is one of the most securest facilities that we have in Louisiana. And at this time, Louisiana had over 10,000 correctional institutes. So we go through all kinds of twists and turns and narrow spillways. Now, when you get to this prison, you're going to see the lights first. I'm actually going to a prison for people who tried to escape, which I never tried to escape. So finally, after like two to three hours of riding on the boat, we get to the docking station of this prison. Now, when I tell you the COs was armed to the teeth, now, when you get off the boat from the mainland, you got to get on another boat to go to the prison. Now, a lot of people in Louisiana know what this prison is already. So we ride for another 30 minutes. Now, we finally at the prison. I immediately get stripped down. The Paris prison took their clothes back. I actually put on my clothes that I went to prison in. Now, with they intake, what they do is they do a whole nother intake of all your personal possessions. Then they take you to another place, almost look like a football locker room, and they do a thorough search. Then they make you shower, then put on their prison issue clothes. Then after that, they take you to another place, almost like a chow hall. Then they give you paperwork to fill out. Now, when I sit down to fill out my paperwork, they got other inmates just walking around. What's up with you, little homie? I'm cooling, baby. All right. Where you from, little homie? I'm from BR, baby. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you don't talk too much, huh? Yeah, that's cool, though. Not really, not really. really. Right. Yeah. Hey, you don't be getting down with the get down, huh? What you mean, nigga? What? What? Chill out, little homie. On that bitch ass shit? Boy, I'll slap you. I hope they put your little sex ass with me over there. Put me where? Boy, you don't want that. You don't want that. You don't want that. Huh? Damn, little homie. Oh, hit me. Get on. Let's go. Let's go. Huh? Yeah. What up? Look. Oh, all right. Look. Bang. Huh? Bam. Bam. Now, while I'm filling my paperwork out, this veteran inmate, he comes straight up to me and try to run that first time in game on me. They always start out with a bunch of innocent seeming questions, but they're not innocent at all. Basically, his only reason for coming at you is to size you up to see what kind of dude you are. Man, this dude all out of nowhere just stole on me. And we must have fought for about 15 minutes with no interruptions from any other trustee or CEO. The the only thing that happened was I broke him down. Now, if I was really a first-timer, I would have been violated that first night because he came on hard. 
to the average person, they go in looking for a friend. Hey, you finished with your paperwork? Oh, I'm almost finished with it. Well, when you finish, bring it up here. I'm the one who take up the paperwork. My name Willie. And uh, you better watch these motherfuckers. They always doing this shit. They looking for the weakest link. Yeah, I see that shit. When I first came to this prison, I was straight. You ever been to prison before? Yeah, I did a lot of times. Well, good. Then you already know. Depend on yourself. Don't look at these guards for nothing because they don't help nobody around here. If you can't survive on your own, it's over with for you. Word to the wise. If you see a guy named Strawberry come at you, go the whole other way. Don't believe a word come out of his mouth. Yeah, I appreciate that. Good looking out. Be careful. If you want to figure out how anything work around here, you can holler at me. Now, that shit right there is also gained by the queens because they worse than the straight dudes. They play all kind of mind games with you because a lot of dudes underestimate these queens and think they can't fight. So I finished with my paperwork, turned it in, and then a prison orderly, which is an inmate, showed me to my dorm, and I went to Trap Fox. Now, every dorm at this prison is named just like the military. Trap Fox, Bravo, Delta, Maverick. Now, the dorms at this prison is set up completely different. Only four dorms. Inside, each one of these dorms has 14 rooms, and each room contains 10 inmates. Now, the doors to the rooms are never locked. You could travel freely through dorms, not just your dorms. You're obligated to work two days out the week and do army drills every single day. They wake you up at 445 and you march and do army drills and hum songs. I'm about to tell you what my mama said. Wake up early and get out of the bed. I got the world at the heel of my feet. If a man don't work, then a man don't eat. Left fleet, right fleet, march on march. My path is brightly lit cause I carry the torch. I achieve every mission cause I will not abort. Sound off. Now when I get to my dorm, I was shocked by how clean it was. But sometimes the cleanest looking things is the dirtiest things. So now my bunk is bunk 180 and they got me almost all the way to the back. Now this is another prison that believe in the fishing expedition, but they weird in the way they do things. This shit blew my mind. I won't kiss his neck. I won't suck them titties. Well, we gonna take turns then. And when I tell you it ain't one or two people saying this, they saying it all together. 50 people say, I won't kiss your neck. 50 people say, I won't suck them titties. And then everybody say, we gonna take turns then at the same exact time. The shit sounds scary. Now, my first day here, I didn't even hear the fishing expedition because when I got here, all the inmates was already outside March. After I filled all that paperwork out, it took me about two hours to reach the back. So that put me right at 4, 4.30. Now, since everybody was in the field marching and the dorm was clear, I decided to go put all my stuff away and go take a shower. Now, when I'm getting out the shower, all the inmates coming back in and I'm just looking around Man, they got a lot of this activity going on, and plus these dudes is big as hell. Now, as these dudes start flooding in from every which way, I'm looking for the CO, but I don't see no CO. These dudes moving by themselves. Now, I'm at my rack putting on my clothes. Mm, mm, mm. What's your name? What prison you came from? Hey, my name Kenny, sweet Kenny. What you need all that privacy for? What you hiding? Kenny, my man. Listen, I don't have no problems with your lifestyle. I just don't go that way. Now, if you don't mind, I'd rather get back to doing what I'm doing. Shit, you better ask around about Kenny. Whatever Kenny want, Kenny get. Kenny, I'm gonna ask you one more time, politely. Can I get back to doing what I was doing and I don't want nobody in my section that close to me? So now me and Kenny having words going backwards and forth and it's getting heated and loud. Now, at this time, Willie walk up. Now, what's going on over here? I was over here trying to ask Kenny nicely to leave my section, but I ain't gonna ask too many more times. Kenny, girl, you better get your ass on away from here. I just seen this man whoop box ass. So Willie end up stepping in and intervening. That's what helped de-escalate that situation because I was about to break on Kenny because he was violating my personal space and he would not go continue back to what he was doing. And his room is way on the other side. Now, I finally get back 
to putting on my clothes and organizing my stuff. And I see this big old stupid size, no neck dude. He just big. Look like he been lifting weights all the days of his life. Now I later found out his name was Papa and he got a whole big crew. Now they got a bunch of dudes walking around with little small notepads hollering out five stars. Now I just see him walking around hollering out five stars and talking to different people. I'm just sitting there trying to figure out what are they doing? Now later, I found out what Five Stars is. Five Stars is a game that people that's involved with their activity play. Now you could be doing something wrong, wrong in prison and every time you do something that somebody don't like, you get a star by your name. Once you get five stars, now once you get five stars, you getting violated. And the way you get on that list is anybody who really want to participate in that activity with you, they got to nominate you. Now, this is just the tip of this prison because this way of life inside this prison is way more severe. And they got a lot more games with themselves. Now, at this time, I'm still sitting on my rack, and they walking around taking up names, getting people to vote on the five stars. So, Papa and three more other dudes go up to a dude named Keontae and tell him he been nominated for the five stars list. Say, Keontae, bro, you been nominated, bro. What you mean I been nominated? Yeah, dude, you been nominated. You see the other day when you kept falling behind and we had to hike that extra mile because of you kept falling behind? Yeah, that was your last Right. You nominated. Man, you got me f***ed up. What? Bam. Huh? Bam. Come on. Come on. Let's show them. Bow. We'll take you right now. Bam. 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 Huh? Bam. What? Bam. Yeah, come on. Now, I ain't been in this prison 24 hours, and I didn't have a fight, and they done stomped the hell out of uh, Keontae. And the more I pay attention to things, the more I see. These dudes have no fear of being caught with their weapons, because they all got weapons on them in here. Now, last night when I was filling out them papers, I read and pay close attention. I only have to stay in this particular prison from six to eight months before I'm gonna be shipped somewhere else. This is almost like the warden did this as an extra punishment. So now I wanna get y'all familiar with a couple names. I'm gonna start bringing people in as we go because a lot of serious things happen here. So, okay, we got Corporal Rodriguez that's in this prison and he's a CO. That's a a white CO. We got CO Richie. We got Sergeant Miller. We got CO. We got First Sergeant Clyde. We got CO Precious. And we got CO Richie. Now, a couple inmates I need you to get familiar with because they'll be coming up in the episode soon, which is Box. That's who I had a fight with. You got Kenny and Willie. You got Papa, Danny, and Arthur. You got TT, DeWitt, and Cole, and Lucky, Deshaun, and Carlo. So these are some of the people that you're gonna be hearing about soon. So these episodes gonna be coming right back at you.